Welcome to a new season on Azentuary. Our story begins a few centuries after the conclusion of our last season. In that time, the world has begun to feel small. As colonies and trade have brought goods and peoples from across the planet together, education and the arts are experiencing a renaissance. Science and technology are beginning to push the boundaries of understanding, and no place is more important than the market. For seven days, every seven years, the world comes together to share its achievements. The location is announced a year to the day before it opens, and it may open anywhere. This year, it is opening in the eastern desert of Tolgan, a place with no known civilization, so all participants had to travel the world to visit. As a result, ships are moored to each other, stretching out into the ocean in a network of inns, taverns, and exchanges, while the mainland is filled with the pop-up tents and temporary structures of the impromptu city that is the market. Rumor has it that the world is sitting on the precipice of change, though what exactly the change might entail is a mystery. Each of you awoke today, the first day of the market, upon a sleeper ship, halfway to shore. By chance, you share a common room filled with bunk beds, and in the center of the room, there is a blue crystal ball. You hear, Congratulations! You five have been selected to participate in the market's first annual scavenger hunt. Carry me with you as you find each item you need to win. Remember, you are in a race against time and others. Your first item is a black mirror in the shape of a small book. You'll know you found it when it lies to you. Ha <laughs> ha! Excelsior! Oh! Well, I suppose that's better than me spending the day stoning down the deck like me, uh, like me first mate was wanting me to do. But... But, uh, yes, uh, this sounds like a true adventure. Does it? Because I just woke up from a hangover and I processed none of what was said there. Does anyone have notes? God, how dare this annoying ball awaken me from my nap. Well, there's three voices. Is there a fourth voice? This one is confused how to react, as this one does not sleep. <laughs> Alright, fine. You were just hanging out. <laughs> Poke the ball. <laughs> it, it goes dink. Well, since... Uh... You are not part of me regular crew. I suppose uh, introductions should be in order. I will go first. Me name is Gogo the Vile. I don't know why I am called the Vile, since I am such a lovely person inside. Uh, maybe it's because I, I don't believe in bathing except once every leap year. But, uh, eh, who knows? Uh, oh, is that why the room smells so bad? It's just me natural dusky scent. Might be a tiefling after all. We have this natural smoky flavor about us. Some find it rather appealing. I don't like the term flavor to discuss body odor. <laughs> well, little lass, what be your name? Hmm. <laughs> you can call me Hen. And that's all I care to share. I really don't need to get wrapped up into some... Well, whatever this is of a bunch of nobodies that I don't care about. <laughs> I've got places to be, parties to start, booze to drink, okay? Uh. Alrighty then. I am your... I am a gold dwarf, and I thought I'd be able to find some more magic loot around this area. I don't want to talk much about my background. I don't think it's any of your business. Well, alrighty then. Everybody has secrets. 
And you seem to have none, <laughs> Mr. Talks a lot. Well, somebody must, otherwise this party be getting dull. And you, over in the corner, insect man, what be your name? A fleshy body cannot process the language and my name in your language. You may call me Kakano. Kakano? Kakano. Well, I'll be doing the best um, you can, uh, Mr. Kakano. But uh, don't be surprised if uh, I get it wrong from time to time. It is understandable. You are soft after all. That sounds about right. <sighs> I mean, are there any rewards in this scavenger hunt thing? Uh, maybe you should ask the blue ball. Maybe you should ask your face to shut up. Okay. I'm going to tap the blue ball and be like, hey, um, so scavenger hunt, whatever. Black Mirror looks like a book. Haha. <laughs> That's super fun. Um, but what do we get out of this? Riches beyond your wildest dreams await you at the finish line. Hmm. Just think, me lass. All the booze you could ever buy. Nah, I already have that. <laughs> Something in me doesn't trust this blue ball. Yeah, it's probably a trap. I say we go for it. <laughs> Yes, maybe I can get some sleep then. Let's get this over with. Fair enough. Kakano cares not for riches, but you seem like possible good clutch mates. Shall Kakano come? All right. Oh. Excellent. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, uh, like, uh, I pick up the blue ball and I'd be like, uh, all right. All right, me, Bolly. Show us the way. Uh, you hold it up and nothing happens. Yeah, it won't really be a scavenger hunt if it gave us all the answers now, would it? <laughs> hmm, I suggest since we're looking for a book that we go to the library. <laughs> yes, I suppose we could start there. This is a mirror shaped as a book, not necessarily a book itself, but information is always handy. All right. Let's be off then. Well, you, yes. Okay. So then you, you guys open your door and walk uh, down through the hold of the ship and up into the daylight as you survey the area around you. You see that you are about, oh, you know, midway in the network, and you can cross hopping from boat to boat in either a northerly or westerly direction towards the shore. Anybody got a coin? Uh... Why, yes, I do. Heads we go north, tails we go west. Tis heads. North it is, then. Let's go. All right. All right, as you begin to walk north, you go across a few ships, and you notice there's a change about three vessels along. It's suddenly much wider, and you start to hear livestock and prices being yelled out and grain being unloaded you're in the trading section where it seems like lots of food is being exchanged and moved and handed out you see further ahead there is a, a means off that you can take to the shore but there's a lot of hustle and bustle going on people screaming out in different languages uh, pointing and directing where different foodstuffs are to be taken. Imagine, like, the smell wafts towards my face, and I'm just like, ah, oh, you know, that ship had awful food. Are we sure we can't stop for breakfast or anything like that? Or 
Are there any unattended chickens? I'm... Well, they're asked. What's that supposed to mean? Well, usually people that are hungover are, uh, aren't in the mood to eat. Usually, yes. However, I'm an experienced hungover person. <laughs> and yes, uh, to uh, uh, answer Kakano, there is a chicken run wandering around. Kakano snatched chicken. <laughs> You oh, hear, uh, our miss, I like it. You hear, Oi! Oi, that's my chicken! What the... What are you doing? That's two copper pieces. Kakano, control oh. vermin. Kakano. Leave. You no want chicken. Kakano, take. I'll <laughs> toss the merchant uh, two copper pieces. And say, here, for the trouble. Right. Right, uh, keep an eye on that one. He shakes his head, wondering off. Oh, Wait, trust I... me, we won't. <laughs> Kakano bites off chicken's head and offers to young human. Said she was hungry. Yeah, you know what? I think, uh, stupid voice over there is right. I, I'm kind of nauseous, not really feeling up for food right now. <laughs> Strange. Soft skin, hungry. Then no hungry. Kakano eat. Yeah, you you do that. I'm just gonna walk away <laughs> without making eye contact. <laughs> Probably a good thing. Well, there, uh, Mr. Kakano, just uh, for future reference, uh, uh, members of uh, her species prefer to uh, pass their protein over an open flame uh, first before they eat. Chakakano understands. Just add extra flavor. Sometimes Chakakano also do. Do you have flame? Uh, no, not right now. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I could have flame. <laughs> we'll, uh, we can stop at a tavern or something on the way, uh, and, uh, get, uh, get her some breakfast or something. Understand. Perhaps one of these merchants or hawkers has heard something about our book we're looking for. Uh, probably a smart idea. <laughs> but they could also be in on the scavenger hunt, and uh, maybe they would uh, steer us astray. Do you see any ob other obnoxious blue orbs around? <laughs> oh, uh, you roll a perception check. All right. Hmm. Ah, uh, yes. A seven. Nope, there are. You do not see any. Well, I say asking around doesn't hurt, then. Well, be my gl me blah, blah, blah. Be my guest there, Miss Hen. Maybe I will. And I go strutting through the stalls, and I'm particularly Except looking... we're still on ships. Oh. Yeah, you're still on the ships. You're, there's on a bunch of food being moved back and forth. All right. Hmm. What kind of food would probably know about mirrors that look like books. <laughs> what kind of food? No clue. This is a food bow. I'm trying to find someone on the food bow who would know oh. on the food bow about mirrors and books. <laughs> well, you said what kind of food, and I'm thinking, well, I guess pigs could be food. Pigs are smart. You could ask a pig. <laughs> I mean, I could, but I don't think that would get us very far. <laughs> um, no, um... I no, I'm just going to walk around and see if anybody seems to look well-knowledged. You'd be looking for either the first mate or the captain there, lass. You say that because you're the first mate or the captain? No, no, I'm just a, uh, I'm just a, lone, a lowly deckhand. Mm. <clears throat> but I've been on ships for years, so I, I do know how the hierarchy go goes. Uh-huh. Well, unless you can discern the captain or first mate at a glance, I'm going to talk to this guy, and I point at someone random and walk over to them. <laughs> the captain will have the fanciest hat. And the first mate will be dressed in better clothing than most of the common uh, sailors will. I've already moved on! <laughs> Alright, you go to a common looking guy who's like, pulling a, a block line to do an unload, and he's just like, uh, hey, what's up? Uh, do you happen to know anything about black mirrors that are in the shape of books or anything like that? <laughs> he gives you an incredibly confused look. He's like, 
no. Uh, I, I, I actually don't even know how to read, uh, so I, I don't do the whole book thing. You know, Who's I probably the... could have guessed. <laughs> Tell me who the captain is of the ship, please. Oh, uh... The captain? He's um he's in his quarters up there, but I I I wouldn't bother him much. I'll take your word for it then. Perhaps we should just proceed to shore. <laughs> well when you say if if actually mates want. Yeah, you yes. know what? Yeah, go you go talk to Captain. <laughs> yeah. Go get him. Kakano begins climbing directly up to Kevin. Kakano, be gentle, be gentle. Uh, as you uh, as you approach the cab the the cabin, you see a uh, a rather well dressed guy uh, take a couple steps towards you and whoop whoop. What can I do for you there, buddy? Are you then a vessel? Nope, first mate. Acceptable. Which mates wish to speak to Captain? Well, I'm I get captain basically now. as good as you get. What can I do for you? Are you a captain? Nope. First mate. I already covered that. Which mate go get captain? <laughs> I kind of don't understand why you no understand. <laughs> right. I'll tell you what. Let me go talk to him. See if he's available. Why don't you just wait right out here? I cannot come with. No, you wait here, okay? Right there. And he, like, starts, like, making circles. Here. <laughs> and he Kakano turns and goes inside. You. Okay, you as, stare. As, and he, he, as he goes inside, Chakakano try to discreetly follow behind. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and he, he turns around right in the door. Whoa, buddy, buddy! And he just puts his hand on your chest and kind of like pushes back, like right out there. We'll be right back, okay? I promise. We'll be right back. Kakano, no can do stealth check. What? Why would you do a stealth check? Kakano, sneak. You're just, <laughs> you're literally in front of the guy. <laughs> Aren't you okay, a barbarian Takano warrior? Listen. You're a barbarian. I don't think barbarians are good at sneaky, sneaking, are they? Well, well I don't know the... what you're... You're not sneaking. <laughs> you're pushing in a door. What are you doing? Very well. Sneaking, apparently. <laughs> All right, so are you waiting there, or are you just going to keep pushing? Got to wait. Okay, so he goes inside. Big benefit. All right, he, he goes inside, and after a couple, after, like, you hear some voices and a couple of minutes pass, and they both answer the door together with swords drawn, and you see the captain with a big smile on his uh, face, and he's like, Well, we don't see many giant bugs around here. I cannot catch, fetch Captain for clutch mates. Captain, come now. Clutch mates? Whoa, there's more of you? <laughs> I think not, mates. buddy. What's your business? I cannot Captain for new clutch mates. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, not available right now. I'll tell you what. Take it up with the first mate. I'm heading back in. Kakano puts hand on Captain's shoulder. <laughs> all right. Can we follow, um, can we follow to where Kakakano is at all right no, now? No, I don't want to follow. I'm going to watch from a distance and try to snag some food to just snack and enjoy the show. <laughs> there is no food. You're, you're, We're how, literally on a boat high, where there's food everywhere. <laughs> live how chicken. high up is this? I mean, it's your standard cabin. Are you talking like how high out of the water, or how high is the cabin over deck? Uh, like uh, above the rest of the group. Oh, like probably let's call it seven and a half, eight feet. Oh, that's yeah, easy. Perfect. 
Uh, and how big is the captain, roughly, in total weight in pounds? Medium human, let's call him 200 pounds. Easy. Akakano tried to grab captain and jump down to rest of group, holding captain. All right, hold on. He has a chance to try to evade. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is glorious. <laughs> well, no, he um, hmm, he didn't do so well on that roll. So yeah, you grab him and jump, and his body flies like a rag doll as you jump down. <laughs> oh, he's holding on to him. I know, but still, if your mass pulling him along by just the shoulder, his feet are going to be flying like a rag doll. And he's like, ah! <laughs> okay. Kakano lands in front of new group and presents captain and says, you go. Then arrived. At this, everything screeches to a halt around you. Every single, like, person that's not actively holding up something basically runs to their captain's aid and surrounds well, you. Well, Probably should also be noted that nobody else ever hears when Takakano speaks unless it's directly to them because it's all telepathic. <laughs> um, okay. Yora says, whoa, 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 everyone. Um, please, my friend Kano here is very uh, new to civilization. We just wanted a word with the captain. We don't mean any harm. No, I mean harm. <laughs> Akakano, All right. I um, you to be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Well, first off, on the first speech, roll persuasion. Let's see uh, if you persuade these guys who are kind of on edge. Okay. I got a uh, 19. You persuade them. Like, oh, okay, he's a giant bug. He doesn't really get it. They, they kind of ease off, but they're all looking at their captain. Like, captain, what, what's going on? Is this okay? And he is not happy. He's like, Somebody get this damn bug off of me! Ca Captain, so please. He... Please, um, calm down. It's okay. We we don't want to hurt you at all. Um, maybe there's something I can do to make this a little worth your while, you know? Maybe like a strong brew or uh, some gold pieces? Gold is... Gold is acceptable. Yes, yes, you can pay me. He kind of okay. waves everyone off and puts out a hand. I'll I'll give him one gold piece. One gold piece. <laughs> this guy almost broke my shoulder. You're giving me one gold piece. Okay, but he okay. didn't. <laughs> no, I'll no, no! Him... Don't bend to this guy. He's an asshole. <laughs> You get listen, one listen. gold piece or he does it again. <laughs> hey, wait a sec. Roll intimidation. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> 14. He believes you. He, he's like, fine. All right. The hell do you people want? Listen, uh, hello, traveler. We're looking for a book. Or a mirror that might appear as a book. Have you heard anything about this? What? No! Of course <laughs> No! What the hell? I'm here delivering food! I don't care about some trinkets. I want coin, and I want to leave. That is what I want. Mm. So simple-minded. Mm. Yes, well, I could have told you that. Uh... We're very sorry, uh, me good captain, sir. Uh, we shall be on our way. Yeah. Good. The hell off my ship. Let us go, good companions. Uh, we will find our answers most likely on shore, not offshore. All right, all right. <laughs> As we leave, can I make a sleight of hand check to steal a loaf of bread? Of course. That's an eight. <laughs> You are unsuccessful. You, like, go to pick one up, and the guy who's, like, loading loaves just smacks your hand, like, no touching! Well, I tried. <laughs> Don't worry, lass. We shall find you some breakfast in that tavern on shore. Yeah, but you're probably gonna have to pay for it. Well, yes. 
But tis only usually a couple coppers. And then maybe you can have some grog with breakfast. Might improve your mood a little bit. Mm. No, this isn't a mood. This is just me. So, we ah, make it to shore. <laughs> fantastic. Awesome. Well, you guys basically, uh, yeah, you, you take the same path as they go. There's a long a dock that's been kind of, it's floating, it's been lashed together, and it's basically the way people walk from the boats on without having to take ferry ships. So, you arrive. You're in this bustling trade district. There are uh, carts, wagons going out in multiple directions from here, delivering these goods. And it's quite the hustle and bustle. You... Kind of look around and roll a, let's see, let's do a perception check. Whoever wants to. I got a nat 20. I'd say that's rather successful. Oh, and this is appropriate. So another dwarf catches your eye. A, from what you can tell from the distance... A uh, female one, you know, they both have beards, which makes it difficult. But uh, this one appears to have uh, kind of tangled blonde hair. And as you look, you see these narrow hazel eyes staring back at you. Though there is something a little off-putting. She appears to have a fully tattooed face, which is unusual for dwarves. Hmm, that dwarf i've never seen tattoos like that before something out of place about this one i think we should go check it out well lead on sir Let's all go. right you yeah you go hmm. over there and yep. she looks you up and down so the dwarf eh Sorry, I don't have a Hello. good voice for that. Let me try that again. <laughs> Hold on. That was a terrible voice. She comes up. Oh, another dwarf, eh? Oh, that's going to be terrible to to do. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, I'm just using my regular. Mm -hmm. Let's just say, so another dwarf. All right, go from there. You, you continue the role play. I yes. Uh, pretty obvious, isn't it? You're a dwarf yeah. as well? No, I'm a tiefling, but... I didn't uh, think so. <laughs> he, he is pretty. <laughs> he's pretty obvious as a dwarf. No, he just likes to talk when he's not even being addressed. <laughs> well, I mean, I did follow. I figured please. we would go as a party. Yeah, please yes, my... but it doesn't mean that he was talk. She was talking to you. <laughs> my friends and I are new. New travel other. Please forgive them. Your tattoos are very interesting. Uh, can I ask where you come from? You can ask. I'm not planning on answering. Perhaps I could uh, buy you a drink or something to wet your whistle. Could. Though uh, the real one to wet is Aaron up there. And as you glance upward, you see a raven come flying down and perch on her shoulder. She stares at you. It's like the raven is looking into your soul. Beautiful bird. How could I make my acquaintance to the bird? You don't. But the reason I saw you, the reason you seemed interesting, I sensed something about you. You're carrying something magical on you. Hmm. I have several magical things. What, uh, what are you looking for? Oh, something blue. About palm-sized. Ah, yes. Should we show, should we show her? No. Nay. I don't nay. trust her as far as I can throw her, but I do think I can take her in a fight, so I'm yeah, sure. <laughs> Mm. 
Yes, we have encountered a magical orb. It uh, very rudely woke me up from my sleep this morning. What do you want with it? Oh, I simply am curious as to what you are being sent to find. Because I'm trying to find out who is sending you to find it. Mm. Hmm. The orb fetched us to find a book that is uh, a mirror in disguise. Have you heard of anything like this? Hmm. Yes. A sec. I'm, uh, she is going to roll a history check since you asked. And yeah, she doesn't do great. She says, perhaps you should head towards the temple district. You might find blessings from the gods there. Thank you for the information. Yes. And Ooh. she, uh, oh, go ahead. Might I ask, uh, who was it you were looking for in the orb? Oh, I'm not looking for anyone in specific. I'm just trying to figure out why there are suddenly scavenger hunts occurring at the market. Perhaps uh, you'd like to come you... with us. Ha! Not a bleeding chance in, well, wherever that tiefling's from. <laughs> Uh, why be ye concerned about who is putting on these scavenger hunts there, lassie? Oh, my employer pays me well for information. That's all. And she turns and starts to walk away, and as she turns, the raven flips around on her shoulder and continues to stare at you. Ah, that's a bird shivers me timbers. just a bird <laughs> yes but tis a creepy bird let's be off to the temple district then ah uh, well uh, uh me thinks miss hen here uh, would like to have breakfast first maybe twid improve her mood slightly it won't very well I know I have a uh, delightful little tavern here on the waterfront. It, uh, it sells a good cheap grog. Don't need your damn grog. But all I need is really a bread. I think faster when I'm eating on the go. Mm -hmm. Ah, well. In that case, there is a stall just around the corner that, that uh, specializes in baked goods. How do you know this? <laughs> I'm a sailor. I've been in every port. Yeah, Come but on. this is a new port. It was just, yeah. like, literally constructed. Were you not listening to the exposition? <laughs> I've been everywhere. I know how these are all laid out. Uh, you don't. <laughs> God. Oh, all right. Just... All, right. <laughs> all right, I'll tell you what. Since you, you're, you're a longtime sailor, we'll give you Pirate's Intuition, the, the new homebrew thing. You pull into a port, roll a 1d20... And if it's over 10, you just kind of know where stuff is. But if it's not, you get lost and confused. How about that? <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> All right. Roll me a 1d20. Tell me what you get. Uh, I just got an 18. All right. Yeah, you're right. There happens to be a small hole in the wall that they use to feed the, the dock workers here. It's right around the corner. Well, now don't I look stupid? <laughs> ah, well, I was just able to follow me nose, lassie. If be told. All right, so I guess you lead them around the corner and you see a relatively uh, poor uh, establishment. I don't know what to consider it. It's a... Um, you, you definitely would be like a... What, more of a squalid inn? <laughs> I guess you could say. Uh... You know, very low-end foods. Hmm. Well. All right. Well, uh, I just uh, saunter right in 
and uh, call out to the a tavern keeper. Ah, barkeep, a loaf of your best bread and a uh, pint think of, of this your... more. Think of this more as like a roadside stall, you know, like uh, they're handing the food out, you know. Oh, OK. Well, you, did, you did say tavern, so. I know. I said I. Sorry, I'm trying to create the world and give it a a, a feeling more uh, organically. Got it. Okay. Well, in that case, let me saunter up to the uh, the bread stand and uh, be like, "Ah, yes, uh, me good. Uh, whoever is running it, uh, let us have your finest loaf of bread. We be in a." Might have a rush. Uh, sure. Uh, no problem. I mean, cheapest bread you can get right here. You know, copper piece for a loaf. All right, I flip. I flip. Uh, I flip him one copper piece. I'll Perfect. flip him a copper piece and take a loaf too. Excellent. Yep, two loaves out. All right. Anyone else want anything? Got some frogs. Actually, we steered them this morning. No, no, I'm good. Uh, actually, I will uh, flip them uh, a second copper piece for a second loaf. Jeez, you guys are loading up on just the... That's all carbohydrates. You guys need some protein. I got myself... Here, I got some crisped worm skewers, and you, know, you want some of them? Uh, no, no. I'd rather starve. <laughs> Disgusting. Okay. How dare you profane my animal brethren. Well, all right. If you want to be more vegetarian, that's that's up to you. I mean, you got like I, I think there's some macadamias around here. I might have some chili. You want some chili? No, that's beans. Ah, uh, we might. We have a bit of a delicate constitution uh, this early in the morning. Uh, bread is just fine. Uh, all right. Uh, sounds good. All right. I receive the, my two loaves of bread, and I immediately hand one to Hen. Well, thanks for the free meal. And I'll start munching on bread, tearing off pieces. Mm -hmm. All right. So you guys are walking about like a bunch of French. Um, <laughs> uh, where do you go from here? Uh, the Temple District. Okay. Uh, how do you know where that is? Well, apparently like, with his you, pirate's you know. intuition. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, you guys, you there's stuff, you know, going on uh, all around you. I guess roll an insight check. Or we could ask the person that just sold us the bread where the temple district is. Oh, yeah. Nah, we already walked away. <laughs> oh, good point. <laughs> I got a I've made two steps. I can't go back. <laughs> no, we would seem too needy if we did that. <laughs> I refuse to be embarrassed in this town that I'm probably not even going to see that guy ever again. Let's All just right, ask sorry. the nearest passerby. Perfect. You say that, and there's a random person, uh, you know, carrying like a low, uh, a bag of flour over their shoulder. Excuse me. Huh. Um. Could you tell us where the temple district is? Uh, temple district. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I just moved the food around here. Um, the, the, the cart guys. Talk to the cart guys right, right over there. I, I, I gotta go. I gotta, this thing is heavy. Oh, wow. This, this it was helpful. <laughs> I'm going back to the baker. I just run really quick back to the baker guy. And I say, excuse me, kind baker. Ah. Do you know where the temple district is? Uh, I, I think to the north. Uh, just head due north. Great. Thank you so much. And I flip him a copper coin. What? Do you, do you want anything for this? No, it's all you. Oh, oh okay. Thanks. So it's like I get to eat today. Anywhere. You're going to throw money. Why not throw it at me? <laughs> what is a few <laughs> coppers? I've seen riches that you would never believe. Uh-huh, uh-huh, sure. And my name's Thomas O'Malley. Anyways, <laughs> let's go well, north, I Thomas. guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, let's go north. 
Yes, there's a whole digression of uh, Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe jokes that could suddenly start occurring if we don't. Um, <laughs> all right. So you guys head to the north, and you start to see uh, what looks like miniature versions, like makeshift temples that have been popped up. And it's it appears it's almost like a... Uh, like a tr job fair booth set up, you know, like, you know, come worship this god, come worship that god. Are you here visiting to do business there? You can come make a donation here. It'll help you out, you know, that type of stuff. Ugh, and gods. Yep. And as you and as you walk through, a uh, well here, roll. Uh, let's see. Let's do a yeah. Let's do a perception checks all around just just to see what you see. Ha! I got a well, 17. Yeah. Hen gets a 3. Because Hen hates gods. <laughs> I get uh, a 12. Akakano does not value gods which are poorer than he is. Okay, so you don't care. You're just kind of wandering around. Yes. Looking for okay. Mira. All right, so you're just kind of looking around, looking for any signs. You're not sure what you're looking for. Uh, how does that gal go? <laughs> well, how did you say that again? I just pronounced it gago. Gago. All right, gago. I guess gago would also work. I'm just going to call you gago because it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Was a randomly generated name. I, I I know I get that. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you uh, you know you kind of start looking around and you notice that some like you think you recognize some tieflings down at the end of an aisle to your right, and uh, Yora, as you're kind of looking around, you see a couple of dwarven markers to your left. And a poster catches your eye. It appears to be for a lost dog. And uh, just out of curiosity, what's your intelligence? Uh, which one of us? Uh, Yora. Oh, mine is, uh, well, 10, so plus zero. Ten? Okay, you can read. Excellent. Um... So you go over and you you look at the poster and it says, "Wanted." Isanel answers to Izzy. Blink dog, if found, return to Serana. Hmm. Something about this dog catches my eye. It does seem unusual that someone would even look for one in this area. Well, if I look around, are there any dogs running around? You, uh, roll a perception check. I got a, a 23. You very astutely check everything and you see no dogs anywhere. Well, I'm going to take the paper and roll it up and put it in my pocket. All right. You do that. Okay. Alright, you guys want to continue looking around? There's, uh, like I said, there's some, like, tieflings to the right, some dwarven markings to the left, and more fancier builds as you go straight ahead to the north. Mm, I think we should go towards the north, towards our fancy buildings. I mean, that would make the most sense to me, but hey, what do I know? <laughs> uh... I think I'll catch up with you. Uh, I see some of me, uh, me folk, over yonder, and uh, maybe I can get some information from them. There's, there's currents of information that run through the Tiefling community. As you wish. We'll see you at the largest temple that you come across to the north. Aye. All right. 
Uh, you wander off that way. And does anyone go with him? Just checking. Uh, no. no. Is he going solo? Uh, unless uh, Kokoro is coming with. Get down in Kokoro. <laughs> <laughs> What is Kokono doing? Kokono is looking for mirror. Oh yes, yes. but is is uh, is he going to stick with Gago the Vile or is he going with the other two? North to the temples. Hello group. His group. Need protection. Oh Check you're out. you're just group need protection. Okay. So, all right, sounds like you're on your own there, Gago. All right, well, I uh, wander on over to uh, where I saw the tieflings. All right, you wander that way. Let me real quick. Okay, so you guys, the rest of the group continues to head deeper into the temple district. The uh, stalls, the structures get more grand as you proceed. Uh, it seems that the wealthier the religion, the more followers they had, the more prime real estate they were able to carve out and claim, and the more followers they could put to building fancier makeshift temples here for the favor of their various gods. Now, cool. as you look around, yeah. I'm in a... Oh, sorry, what? No, I just said this was all bullshit. Gods and yeah. worshipping gods and whatnot, they all suck. Mm. So, all right, as you see, you kind of say that, we're going to jump over and uh, deal with Gago real quick. So, Gago, you walk down and you see various tieflings uh, in and out of marked temples that uh, roll a religion check real quick. Ah, oh, that'd be an 18. 18. You recognize most of these you're just like uh-huh yeah those guys probably don't trust them uh they'll just try to steal my money through offering uh and you just kind of look around and who is it, if you don't mind me asking your patron uh you know? have, we, have we gotten that far and they have not gotten that far i am a uh, a storm sorcerer Oh, Storm Sorcerer. I thought Warlock for some reason. I was all no. confused. You don't have a patron. I'm sorry. Um, uh, so, never mind. So, yeah, you're just, you're looking around and uh, you're like, oh, hey, those guys, I recognize that symbol. That's a religious symbol near where I grew up, so I can talk to them and understand what, you know, the traditions that they're talking about. So, because of that role on religion, you go and talk to the tiefling over there. I. Well, hello, me hearties. Uh, we woke up this morning, and my me friends and I were kind of roped into this little uh, quest. Uh, perchance, have you, uh, good uh, good people, uh, heard of uh, anything involving little blue balls, or uh, perhaps a black mirror that is shaped like a book? Hmm. He stops what he is doing to pay attention to your question, folds his hands downward, and rests his head upon them. He's, he's contemplating what you were saying. He's, hmm, I myself know of no such things. But perhaps, do you have one of these things with you? We could make an offering at the altar and see if there is a divine channel which may assist you. Uh, no, 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 nothing, nothing on me. Uh, uh, I am just a common sailor. I don't have much in the way of, of anything. Uh, they don't, they don't pay me a whole lot. Well, I, yes, I understand, but perhaps if you had one of these spheres of which you speak, we could ascertain some information you know the god of knowledge here is very giving i think i might have 
given the sphere to the dwarf. Don't believe I have it. You have a dwarf with you. Interesting. We have a dwarf here as one of our order. Ah, well, actually, uh, the dwarf is not with me at the moment. Ah, that is too bad. Perhaps you should bring them back. We could have a meeting of the sizes, if you will. Uh, a meeting of the beards. Ah, yes. Uh, well, I shall see. Uh, thank you, but I must be off now. And I hurry away north. Cheerio! I don't know why he suddenly became British, but I just thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> he's like waving at you. You get the little Doppler effect. He's saying goodbye and you're running away north. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> back to the other guys. As, All right. as, I, as I'm leaving, I'm thinking to myself uh, that that was uh, uh, an extraordinarily creepy uh, interaction there. All right. Uh, so as you you guys move into these kind of uh, larger temple areas, you see that there's a lot of, you know, very fancy buildings and uh, a lot of adherents out front, finely dressed, each one of them to anyone new coming by, you know, trying to wave them down, see if they will come in and... You know, worship at their temple to, to join them. Uh, others, you can tell, they don't even bother because they're already carrying offerings marked with very specific temples that they are going to. And from here, let's see. What should we do? Perhaps, uh, again, let's do a perception check for everyone. At one. I got a 12. Eight. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I got a six. Wow, everyone rolled low. Okay. Uh, yeah, you guys just kind of stand around and you're kind of looking bewildered at everything that's going on around you. Um as you're kind of poking around looking at the temples uh whatnot uh gago eventually catches up with you and is just like hey guys hello gago good to see you again what did you discover uh not much other than you know these these religious types are uh a wee bit unbalanced methinks I'm getting that impression as well. Let's yes. see. How about... Um, I'm going to roll something real quick. All right. You guys suddenly hear a scream come from one of the the darker painted temples. It appears to have kind of a red dancing light inside, and even the uh, even the adherents out front are shocked and turn to look inward. Nah, it's one of those sex cults. Wouldn't a sex cult be like painted pink or white with a pink heart out front? Not necessarily. I mean, but those dancing red lights—that's a dead giveaway. <laughs> Red Let's is the move color closer. Of sex. <laughs> All right. You move closer. Uh, you don't hear any further screams. Uh, are there any acolyte or priests hanging out in front of this temple? Yeah, there's two of them that are looking in, trying. They're like afraid to enter. They're looking around at like what was that. <clears throat> Uh, I tap one on the shoulder. Ah, me good, sir. Uh, he who, be, who be the god of this temple? Oh, this one? This is, uh... 
Hold on. I uh, I didn't actually plan for the specific temples, so I need to look up. Uh, I need to make up a name or look one up real quick. Oh, fantasy name generator. What do you got? Come on. Oh, come on. It's not that hard to make it up. Just do it. There you go. Well, why don't you make it up then? <laughs> oh. Uh, this is... This is the the, the great god uh, Gomas. And uh, what be Gomas the god of? Well, science. Well, that makes no damn sense. I think this is a cover up. If you're if you're a sex dungeon, just say you're a sex dungeon. We won't report you, okay? It's fine. Well, we 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 study sex, but. Only to better understand the different aspects of it, biologically, psychologically, endocrinotically, like... We, we right, study my eyes are glazing things. over, stop talking. <laughs> I think maybe we should investigate the screen. I don't like the sound of it. I think you'd be right there, Yora. Okay, I'm going right. to move into the temple. They shall right. follow. You move inside and you see a terrified looking halfling uh, against one of the walls. And there's the like offering table in front of him and he's he's shaking, pointing at it. Little friend, what has happened here? It. I, I picked it up. I touched it. I touched it, and in the darkness, it lit brighter than a torch and blinded me. See what did I say? A sex cult. This is very interesting. What what is it that we see on the table there? Uh, as you look, you see. Uh, let's see, there's kind of, there's, there's coins and little carved, like, balances, and about, maybe a little bigger than, like, say, well, about the size of a deck of cards, you see what looks like a piece of, it, from your distance, and a piece of obsidian that's just sitting there shined about, like, deck of card size. Yeah, there we go. I, uh, ah. I'm gonna point, yeah, point at the deck of cards and say, is this what harmed you, little one? Yeah, yes, yes, I, I, I touched it, and it turned white. Could this be our black mirror that looks like a book? Or a piece of it. I mean, if you don't <laughs> want it, we're glad to take it off your hands. In fact, uh, we... Specialize in malfunctioning um, religious icon symbol maintenance. We can like we'll gladly like take this off your hands, do a little mumbo jumbo with it, bring it right back, good as new. It won't ever do that to you ever again. Uh, uh, oh, oh, okay. Um, I, I yeah, take take it away, take it away. Yes, we will do that. This is all going to be okay, all right? And I just snag the thing and walk out of the temple. <laughs> As you reach to snag it, all of a sudden, time freezes, and everything goes black. You feel the rush of wind past you as you are falling, and all of a sudden, there is a thud. You look around in the dim light, there is a ring of glowing fungus giving a kind of an eerie yellow glow to everyone, but you see you are with your companions, all looking at each other rather stunned. Hmm. You touched it with your bare hands? You touched the magical item that hurt that thing? 
I, mean, I just thought it was a, like they were being a wussy, you know, like. Whatever, I'm not used to being hurt. This is this is definitely new for me. I'll say that. <laughs> That's it. From now on, no more touching. You don't touch anything unless I say you could touch it. What? You're not my mom or dad or any parental figure. I don't have to no, listen to anything me. you say. You you may have gotten us killed. Have some have some sense of danger. <sighs> you know, if you live for as long as I have, I mean a sh short, normal life as I have, you'll know that there is no good in life without danger. I kind of Regardless, we're here now, so now time to figure it out. You can yell at me later. <laughs> I can kind of projects out. Would it be safer for the rest of Clutch if we eat this one? <laughs> <laughs> I eat you first. <laughs> Okay, it's so a we're challenge if you insist. Kakano is also hungry. <laughs> I just imagine Hen and Kakano like squaring up to each other. <laughs> Alright, at that you see a a tall, grey skinned elf step out of the darkness and look at you. <clears throat> I am Katabri of Drow. I am here to issue you a warning. I pulled you into my realm simply for this. Do not help the merfolk. Hmm. What's well, big? I don't even know where they are. Could you tell me where these merfolk might be? They still reside under the ocean. Perhaps. You are all too young to know of your own history. They are the greatest threat your world has ever known. They are a benign evil which you cannot conceive. Okay. Um, can you tell us anything about this ring of mushrooms around us? It is the light we have in this realm. I see. You are in the Underdark. <laughs> this is my homeland. Well, my friend, have you heard anything about a mirror that looks like a book or a, a glowing crystal orb? Yes, it is why I am here. It is why I am what? And with that, all of a sudden, there is a bright flash. And you guys find yourself back in the temple with that obsidian glowing bright white next to you. The hand continues uh, to move, and Hen snatches it up. The light goes black to back to black obsidian, and the white disappears again almost immediately. See, what did I tell you? It's fine. And I just walk out of the temple. <laughs> oh, well, it worked out this time. That little meeting made absolutely no sense whatsoever. I think it made perfect sense. Don't help the merfolk. Uh, yes. Doesn't that seem very specific? <laughs> I mean, what would even what even would a elf race that lives in the dark, leagues away from the sea, even know or care about a a uh, race of beings that lives, you know, a thousand fathoms down in the sea? I'm about the only thing. It's a seafaring elf. How do you know? <laughs> it's a drow elf. They live in the caves, in the underdark. Well, I say tieflings usually don't live on boats, but here you are. I'd be the exception that proves the rule there, Lassie. Well, but what I am saying is about the only thing that merfolk and drow have in common, and they both live in uh, dark realms. It is just an oddity, that is all. Listen, I say we consult the blue orb again and see if it uh, recognizes this or mirror or whatever it is. 
All right. Uh, which one of us has the orb? I think right. I have. as you're asking that, hmm. uh, yes. because um, Hen ran outside. You guys are inside. Hen, you get confronted by a what looks kind of like a gang of like kind of a classical gang of street thugs and they came running they come running up oi heard there was some commotion you take something out of that temple they asked us to take it out of there so um yes but um it's none of your business now isn't it well that's the thing we make it our business i'm looking what? i'm does it matter to you well, because we're the uh, protection for these temples here. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, I smell... Mm, what's that smell in the air? Bullshit. <laughs> he walks up to you. Look, whatever you took, put it in my hand. Leave now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, can, can we, like, go follow... Uh... Oh, yeah, but you, yeah, yeah. So now, as this exchange is going on, you guys were talking, I'm assuming, and kind of following. So now, you know, feel free to exit the uh, the building. <laughs> okay. Wait one sec. Did we hear this exchange? Not write that down. I swear to God. Give me a second. Yeah, I'm assuming that as you're as you're walking out, you don't hear the beginning of it. Maybe you hear the end of it. It's the uh, give it now, or, or else. Yeah. Yes. How about that? Kano immediately has weapons and body checks. Okay. Um. You just like charge and body slam the guy. Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, I think I can do this in one turn. Akakano does not. It's like an action this. and a bonus action. Uh, except right. uh, Kakakano already body checks up into the ground. Bruh. Hold on, no, not necessarily. Kakakano is on his way. He hears it and is on his way to body check. So here's what I'll have. You, I'll have everyone just go ahead and roll initiative, and then we'll see who gets to go first, Kakakano or Hen. How about that? Hen gets an 18. Kakakano, I got Kakakano a 19. Is a 14. I got a 7. 19, 7. Wait, Gaga, what did you say? 18. No. 19. 19. Wow. Okay. Uh, in this situation, though, uh, Kakakano, as you're charging up, Hen is about being right there on, you know, you heard it after uh, the conversation had been stated, I guess. So, Hen, you go first on this. All right. <clears throat> I use my action to create a tiny Eldritch Cannon in my hand. Um, let's make it a Force Ballista. And as a bonus action, I will activate it. <laughs> so it just shoots him right in the face. <laughs> okay. Um, hold on. Let me uh, let me just get this uh, set up really quick. Good Lord. All right. <laughs> All right, you shoot him in the face. I that would be a I guess roll to hit. Yeah. Oh, lovely. It's a spell attack. That is uh 15. Uh I am trying to find it, but I'm going to say that very likely hits. All right. Yes, it does. Here it is. And he's going to take, wow, I rolled two ones. So he's going to take two damage to the face, but he's also going to get pushed back five feet. Okay. All right. Uh, so he gets pushed back five feet, taking two damage, and you see uh, Kakano just kind of rush in front of you because you push him out of the way just as he was about to be body checked. <laughs> And so okay. then we go immediately. But yeah, so then we go immediately to Kakano. Uh, you've only you're down say five feet of movement, but other than that, it is your turn. Uh, there's that guy pushed back, and you see three others. Two of them catch that guy, 
to kind of like keep him from falling over. And the other one turns and is just kind of assessing the situation. Alright. Uh, Takakano begins by, I guess, closing the distance to put enough space between him and the rest of the party. And then... Okay, well, you're not far away, so no problem. There's at least... Is is there at least five feet or something? Ten feet? Yes, there's at least five feet. Okay. So, as he gets right within distance of them, just hear this insectoid roar. Okay. And activate rage. He activates his rage. Immediately, all of the guys take two points of fire damage. Good lord. And you can direct that at just them, right? It's every creature within a 10-foot radius. Okay, so that includes Hen? I guess so. But Kano's trying to keep out of the way, but yeah. All right, so you... Well, how about this? We'll say you, like, stop yourself, you leap forward, and you enter the rage in front of them just far enough out of the way that you don't hit Hen. Okay, we can do that. All right. But then there's also a uh, he swings at the one that got blasted in the face with a two-handed battle axe. Okay. Axe. <laughs> Go for That's it. It's a twenty-one to hit. Uh, that very solidly hits. All right. Let me see. How does this work then? As a reckless attack in there. A uh, reckless attack is you get advantage uh, to hit, and then it's uh, they get it. A... Dis- advantage is it a against reckless you. attack or is it just rage? Let me see. No, plus two bonus to all strength, melee checks, resistance, half damage taken. Okay, no, it's not a reckless attack. It's just a regular attack. Okay. Plus two bonus. That is... Uh... Just double... I have to double check the damage. Oh, it's only nine slashing damage. Bill. I mean, bam. Yep. I only have the one action. So. Okay. Well, you jump in the middle and you do that, and uh, that guy who gets like blasted back, he he you know, he got blasted back. He got caught. He got hit. He ah, and reaches down and grabs uh short sword from his belt and swings across wildly trying to hit you in retaliation. Probably will hit. And that's just a... What? Probably will hit. You know, it'll hit? Probably. Let's see. That's a 16 to hit? It hits. That does hit. Okay. Uh, so that is... I get the right die. That is five slashing damage. Then, when since I have resistance, is half rounded down or up? Uh, down. All right, so that's three slashing oh, damage. Resistance. Five. I think we always round down, no matter what. So two slashing damage. For Dewey in this situation, do it. Do it as three until I can have a chance to actually look it up and verify. Okay. Sorry, I just want to make... I'd rather... You have plenty of hit points. He'll be fine. Oh, yes. So. All right. Uh, it goes to Yora. Okay. Um, I will throw my shillelagh club at the uh, at the attacker attacking uh, Kak- Kakano. Okay. And it says He's I like... do... Uh, plus six to hit, so, uh, 16 to hit. Uh, that one hits him. Okay. Do a 1d8 plus four bludgeoning damage. Go for it. And I got 12. 12. Dang. All right. Well, you shillelagh him right in the face, and he goes down. It's a straight up just like thwack, and then... He hits the ground, and he does not appear to be breathing at this time. Can I use a bonus action to turn into an animal? 
Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn into a bear. Uh, grizzly bear. Okay. <laughs> all right. And you, all right, you're you're turning into a bear. Got it. Okie dokie. So uh, the next three guys witnessing this all freak out, draw their weapons, and I guess the first two uh, are particularly interested in uh, Akino because he's terrifying and right in front of them. So the first one's going to roll, and that is a, oh, dirty 20 to hit. And that is a terrible roll. That's only four slashing damage I roll <laughs> from him. And then the next guy goes to do the same. And that is an 18 to hit. And, oh, that's a little better. <laughs> that is 10 slashing damage with his uh, sword. The uh, the last guy, uh, he, I guess, is going to be like, Holy crap, there's a bear! Kill it! And attempt to attack the bear. That is a... Oh, that was pathetic. Ten to hit. Mm, that does not hit. I didn't think so. All right. We go now to Gago. Wow. All right. So there's like three guys. Yeah, there's three, yeah. three left. Okay. Um, I will cast a scorching ray. Okay. Uh, one of the two that's on Kakanao, or the one that has turned to go after Yora. Actually, scorching ray has. Three rays of fire, and I can target them separately. I can oh, aim geez. one of each. All right. One. All right. Here we go. Oh, good. That's a twenty-one to cast. Ooh, that's a that's a hit. All right. So. Yep, when I hit the target, takes 2d6 fire damage. So, I'm assuming since that's 3, that's 2d6 per ray, right? Does that make sense? I think you usually roll each one of them. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. All right. So the first one, roll to hit. It's just like the Eldritch Blast. You know, roll to hit, do the damage, roll to hit, do the damage. Oh, well, except it's not a cantrip. Oh, it's not? It's just a spell? It's a second level uh, evocation spell. Oh, gotcha. So you're just, yeah, all right. So yeah, you just blast in that target three times. Just boom, boom, boom. Go for it. Cool. So the first guy gets uh, uh, five fire damage. Okay. The second guy takes nine fire damage. Okay. And the third guy takes 12 fire damage. You got it. All right, and they're all ah. They both they're feeling the burn. All right. Well, after that, we are back to hen. Hmm. Yeah. And I guess I could just fire again. Um, aim at the near sky and um, fire again with the force ballista. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's not. That's that's only eleven to hit. That one does not hit. Well, it misses and cranes into some other poor temple stall, and I just laugh. <laughs> yep, just hits like the side of the wall. Dong. 
All right. Back now. I guess since too many people are close by now. So... Takano draws his hand axe from behind. There's a slice at the first one. Instigated everything. That's a... 15 to hit. You come down to hit, and he throws up his sword at the last moment, and your blade just skitters down it, narrowly missing him. Offhand attack. Follow up. 16 to hit. That one hits. <laughs> right, and that's for... Oh, jeez. Uh, seven damage. All right. You smack into him for seven damage. <laughs> All right. Yorla. Okay. I um, basically just jump onto the nearest person. Wait, how, how many people are around me? Uh, well, they're not necessarily around you. There was two of them attacking Kakanao and one of them... Oh, no, you are... Yeah, that's right. One of them is attacking you. So it is straight... And he is straight in front of you with a sword trying to stab you. So if you want to jump on him, you can just basically go straight forward onto, onto him. Yeah, so <laughs> I just jump on him and maul him in the throat with my claw. All right. Do you have your stats up for that? Um, no, uh, okay, I will open it up real quick. Okay. Here we go. Claw is plus six to hit 2d6 plus four slashing damage. So roll a 1d20 and add six to hit. Okay. I got 26. Not oh, 20. good. Wait, did you nat 20 that? Yeah, I did. Oh my god. Alright, well, roll a 2d6 plus 4 and double it. Okay. We'll start with that and see if that's enough to just kill him. If not, we'll crit him out. So I got 11 total. So that'd be 22. Oh my good lord. Yeah, you just, like... Your claw hits him like in the shoulder and as you slash through you feel it's almost like his bones are just paper compared to your strength and you tear his chest open and like the tips of your claws scrape through his lungs and carve out his heart like an ice cream scoop as <laughs> his chest lands to your left and his body falls to your right Wow. Metal. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so he's really sincerely dead. Uh, the other two, they don't see that. They just feel the damage that has been dealt to them, but a little bolstered by that last hit from the bug not hitting, you know, being deflected, they both go to attack again. And, all right, with their swords, swing hard. That is a four. First one is a 14 to hit on Kekanao. Which is at armor class. So it barely it's just... Exoskeleton. So he, he, yeah, he hard swings and your exoskeleton protects you. And the next one is a 19 to hit. Very much hit. That one hits. All right. He takes a swing and oh, it does a whole four slashing damage. <laughs> Is this after resistance? No, that's before. Okay. Two. Yeah, you're you're very well armored. <laughs> They're having a hard time getting purchase on you. All right, gotta go. All right. <clears throat> I take aim at uh, one of the two remaining uh, ne'er-do-wells and I unleash a firebolt at one of them. Alrighty. Ooh. And I nat one. 
Okay, let's see here. All right, you go to Firebolt, and they're right next to Gago, so you blast Gago. Naturally. Well, he's the only one there. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, it's a 1d10. Hopefully I don't do very well. Yeah, that is... That is five fire damage. Ouch. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Sorry, Kokono. Go. <laughs> All right. Well, that happened. All right, uh, Hen. Hmm. Well, considering that the force ballista didn't work out too well in my favor last time, um, this time I'm gonna pull my crossbow out of my back sling and just. The only, I believe the rules on crossbows is it takes an action to load them. Fine. Mm. I guess I'll just uh, cast Firebolt <laughs> at okay. the nearest guy. Right on. Don't have one. Well, it's a cantrip, so it just fizzle, really. But just to make sure, it's a... Well, only it's a, it's only an eleven to cast, or eleven to hit. Jeez, eleven to hit because isn't it a you're attacking with it? It's a cantrip, yeah. Yeah, so it misses. Yeah, at well. least it doesn't damage uh, Alex. Doesn't damage Kakano anymore. Yeah, I mean if it that's does good. hit something flammable, that thing will catch on fire, but that's not really my problem. <laughs> yeah, but not worn clothing. Just has to be something else. So, correct. All right, crack no. Go. How many left? Just the one? Or no, two. Just, no, there's two. Kakao. Swing at me near the well. Nineteen to hit. Wow, that hits. All right. That is for eleven damage. Oh, good lord. Yeah, that poor dude, he's hurting. He's like, you hit him, and he's barely hanging on. He's, you've knocked the wind out of him. He's he's trying. And then offhand attack at 20. Oh, god. Yeah, that hits. Uh, as we calculate damage, it is... This the other guy or the same guy? Same guy. Okay is another 11. Oh, good lord. 22 damage, so, one hit. Uh, two hits. Yeah, but the second one's doubled. Oh, yes, yeah, so... 33 damage. Yeah. So, you go to hit him, not... Like, he, like I was saying, he was injured. He was going down. He's hurt. And you just, like, bring your sword down and split his body. Like, you, you hit him so hard, he just, like, he looks like the ca a capital letter Y. And then tips over flat. This is ten. Now it's Yora. Okay, so just one guy left, huh? Yes, it's the one right over there next to Kakanao looking horrified because he just saw his friend cleaved in half. Okay. And his, uh, and his other friend was mauled by a bear. <laughs> I am going to um, change back into my human form and uh, offer a way out to this poor uh, terrified guy and say, listen, friend, I don't want to kill you, but if you don't, Leave now. You leave me no choice. Please. Run. And he does that. On his turn, which is after yours, he uses, uses his dash action to run as far away as possible. All right. <laughs> Unless uh, anyone wants to pursue. Oh, wait. What? <laughs> I was saying, unless someone wants to pursue, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you never know with this group. Um, 
And I guess yes, of technically, course. technically speaking, speaking, Kakano has the right to claim reaction as it's he's fleeing. Attack of opportunity. Yeah. But hold on, what were you gonna say first, Yora? Oh, um. Oh, well, the fight's not over, so I won't say it yet. Okay. Well, before the all right, so Kakano, go. Your attack of opportunity. 25 to hit. Oh my god. So as this guy is turning and starting to run away, yeah, you hit him for 25, like, full whack to the back. Yeah, but it's only 9 damage. Yeah, but that's a hard hit. You, you like, slash all the way down his back, and you see just, like, blood come gushing out and soaking his clothes as he's t running away from you. All right, now battle's over. No. <laughs> Evelyn throw. Oh god. So <laughs> hold on. He's all right. Well, let's give him a chance. So you you had done that. He runs uh cuz it comes back around to you. So he's yeah, all right. He's made it say 60 feet or so down through the temples. Now there's a bunch of people around. You're going to javelin throw at him. Yes. 18 to hit. All right. Yeah, it hits. <laughs> it's another nine damage from the javelin. It it kills him. The guy, the the javelin smacks him square in the back. He goes down, and the javelin is pointed straight up like a Christmas tree, in a holder. Yora is uh, shaking her head in shame. Like a cow just. Turns to the group and will probably break us out. It was good hunt. Thank you for allowing good chase. I need target practice. Damn it, Kakakano, yeah, if you weren't no a giant insect. <laughs> for that collecting his for. Uh, javelins and stuff, he begins butchering the guy that was slain in front of him, like chopping off the legs and stuff to put into pouch. Oh, no, 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 Kakano, uh... We we would we be uh, we end up in the brig for uh, chopping up uh, the sentient beings like that. Uh, killing them in battle is one thing, but uh, butchering them to eat later, uh, people take a dim view of that here. Why do you waste protein? Yeah, they should have thought of that before they picked a fight with us. Did any of you maybe think of getting some information out of them before just? blatantly attack um no no <laughs> embarrassing Kakano hasn't stopped butchering either he's still cutting off at least the legs <laughs> <laughs> well we might as well loot the bodies alright uh sure <laughs> go for it I mean there's a half body there there's a torn up one over there. There's a guy with a flagpole over there. I'm I'm going to loot the body of the person that I attacked first with my uh, shillelagh. And uh, okay, yeah. Uh, you you just find a couple of coins. Um, you know, mostly just like a handful of copper pieces. Uh, let's say. There's like nine copper pieces and five silver pieces on him. And a short sword that's of basically no value to you. Useless. These were all poor, unarmed townspeople. <laughs> well, those guys weren't unarmed, to be fair. <laughs> oh yeah, these were all poorly trained fighters. And that's their fault. <laughs> We just punished their ignorance. It's fine. <laughs> fine. Let's move on. All right. Uh, as you... <laughs> All right. So you looted the one. I'm assuming you're leaving the others. Kakanao's going to grab the legs and his javelin, I assume. Oh, and... Got to have some nice brigand ham. Gotcha. And, uh... 
eventually uh, a couple of very well armored uh, looking guys come walking up in lockstep and look at the situation. So, uh, someone want to let me know what happened here? They tried to mug me. Right. So they tried to mug you and you killed them. Actually, no, I didn't. Um, uh, these guys did, but um, they were trying to defend me. So this was all self-defense. All right. And the, the guy looks up. Just a second, I want to roll some real quick. Oh, yeah. He looks up at the um, the temple people, and they're all nodding up and down in agreement with everything you said. And they're like, okay, well, uh, we'll let the Undertaker know, and... Um, they all of a sudden look over at Kakanao and are just a little horrified. And they're just like, we'll have this cleaned up. Is that a leg sticking out of that satchel? You must be mistaken. Murder scenes can get people really confused. You know, like your brain just starts playing tricks on you. I'm sure it's fine, officers. It's fine. Go away. <laughs> right. Yes. I'm definitely going to do that. Uh, uh, Bob, 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 come with me. Come, let's get the hell out of here. And they they walk off down the street. You can see their helmets shaking, just like, oh god. <laughs> um, I like um, whip my little force ballista in my hand around and blow the top of it like a old gunslinger. <laughs> blow the top of what? The the, the force ballista I have. What are you shooting at? I, no, I'm oh, not. Oh, nothing. You're, you're holstering it? Yeah. I'm doing uh, like the little sh this spin, spin, spin. Okay. You know? Got it. Got it. I thought that was quite clear. <laughs> <clears throat> well, good work, team. Let's go. <laughs> Let's find somewhere quiet where we can uh, consult the magic orb again. And really quick, as you uh, you you say that and you start moving, uh, Yora, roll me a perception check. We got a sixteen. All right, you. Really quick, grab the right thing here. Uh, you catch movement out of the corner of your eye, and you see a small dog uh, open up a portal and jump in, and then you turn your head to look where it went, and it jumps out of a wall to your, let's say, right. Uh, is it close to me? It's close enough. You know, it's like maybe 25 feet away. Okay, I'm going to charge the dog and jump on it and try to grab it. Oh, good lord. All right. Um, sure. You charge at the dog and leap. Uh, give me a... Let's just call it an attack roll. Okay. So just like the d20 to attack or to hit? Yep. Okay. Oh, I got a, a three. Yeah, you, you miss... And it leaps away from you, goes bolting straight at a wall, and then opens a portal and leaps through and disappears. Is that yeah. an interdimensional dog? <laughs> I've seen that Something dog like before that. on a handbill. And I show them the picture of the, the handbill that I found. Can't imagine why they'd want it back. <laughs> um... Does it actually look like the dog on the handbill? It does, yes. Oh, okay. All right. But Just it's like a kid's, it's like one of those kids' drawings when they're like, I'm looking for Fluffy, and you know, it's it's kind of just like a rough, a rough sketch. Got it. Hmm. Well, it seems like Fluffy doesn't want us back. <laughs> But that was that was hilarious. Well, I had to try. Can't blame me for trying. 
Yes. Uh, uh, Yora? Yep. Are you, are, are you not a druid? Uh, yes, I am a druid. Could, could you have possibly just, uh, talked to Yon Wee Dog? Well, I might have slipped my mind in the post-battle uh, fog. Ah, yes, yes, I understand. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense to me. <laughs> It was rather exciting. These things happen. <laughs> you still had battle mode on. I get it. I get it. All right. Well. So, yes. Let us find a place to uh, consult uh, Blue Ball and or uh, find someone that might know a little something. Uh about our quest all right so you are yeah you're kind of in the middle of the temple district here yes uh, out in the open where do you want to go uh are the two uh um temple people still out in front of the temple yes uh, i turn to one of them and ask uh uh, yeah, me hearties uh might there be like a library or uh, some other repository of information where we might, you know, go to to see if we can get some of our questions answered. Uh, hmm. Perhaps, perhaps the knowledge traders? Uh, they are uh, two districts to the west from here. Perhaps they, they would be the ones? There is no... Established library, you see. Ah, oh, knowledge traders. Great. That means it will cost coin. I don't believe in it. <laughs> What's a few coins? Let's go. I'm well, glad to see someone's lucrative here. <laughs> Makes things easier <laughs> right. and more boring. <laughs> Off to the west we go, then. Alright, you begin to work your way to the west and the first place you find yourself is ah you see as you move from the temple district over artwork painted down all of the walls giant murals that look like they were put up almost instantaneously they're beautiful displaying uh, various cultures from all over the world uh, representations of every species you could know there's right in front of you this place that it, it's like an alleyway that just kind of extends down between the buildings that you can hear what sounds like bird songs but you don't see any birds there at all but the paintings are so realistic, it's like a, a verdant jungle extending in before you. Mm. Ah. Uh, I pick up a rock that is uh, on the ground next to me, and I chuck it at the painting. It bounces off. It is a painting. It, it just kind of ticks down the way and you hear a uh, you hear a light female voice up ahead say hey don't throw things you could hurt someone uh hello is someone there and you notice that a head pop up suddenly almost like it was out of the painting from a tree but you realize it's just so well painted that there is a cross alley just up ahead and the person looks down at you. It's the face of a uh, female elf. Um, excuse me, could we have a word with you for a, for a minute? Sure, well, yes, but come, please come closer. I'm kind of in the middle of something. Okay, I approach. All right, you see her... 
frantically painting away uh, down this alley, extending the you know illusion of the jungle with, through her paint. She has cropped red hair and dark blue eyes. You notice that beneath her uh, painting like uh, apron, she's still wearing chainmail, and on the ground next to her is laying a battle axe. Uh, excuse me. We were uh, contacted by a, a blue orb entity and have been on a scavenger hunt. Have you ever heard of anything like this happening to anyone? Her frantic painting suddenly stops as she turns and looks at you. Why, yes, I have. Have you responded? Like, have you been successful? Hmm... We have had uh, some success. Yes, we've we found an object that looks like a book, but is also a shard of stone. Do you know about this? I do. Do you have it with you? Mm -hmm. What would you do if we did? Well, examine it. It is a piece of history, an artifact, a relic from the long, long ago. Well, guess what? Now it's our piece of history. <laughs> so you do have it. Uh, she... No, we just have ownership of it. Uh, it's kind of like I a timeshare see. situation. I see. She puts her paintbrush down and picks up the battle axe. <laughs> Listen, we don't want any trouble here. Uh, are, are you going to attack us if we do have the object? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that at all. I am simply concerned. You say you may have this on you. I have some information about it, and I am concerned. Uh, I'm going to turn around and, in, a, in a whisper. I'm going to say, uh, listen, fellow travelers, I think we should show her the shard. All right. But if she tries to run off with it, I'm blasting her. No take the shard out of my pack and hand it to her. She looks at it and you see a flash of horror on her face as her eyes go big. And she says, put it down. I'm going to hit it with my axe. May I ask why, crazy one? <laughs> because it is evil, it must be destroyed. Would you mind if we uh, contact our sources really quick about it? Could you uh, maybe continue painting while we uh, discuss amongst ourselves? Oh, I'm not taking my eyes off that thing now that I've seen it. <laughs> Fine. I say we let her take a whack at it, guys. Uh, well... If we do that, will that mean that we have lost the scavenger hunt, like, right off the bat? Plus, we don't even know if this is what uh, we were supposed to be sent to find with the scavenger hunt. Mm. Something tells me this shark. Uh, it looks like obsidian, which is glass, which shatters rather easily. Okay, let's let's find somewhere more private than this and uh, consult well, our sources. We're kind of in an alleyway, aren't we? Well, let, you let's are, move away from, from this interloper. Yeah. Who is staring at you and who is staring at you. Please, I very much feel like we should destroy that. Well, guess um, what? You're not part of the decision-making process, lady. <laughs> I say we contact the orb really quick, and if it's not it, then sure, she can destroy it. Sounds good. All right, uh, who has the orb? I think I have it here. In my cloak. And I, I reach for it. And pull it out. Okay. You pull it out, and as you do, you see the 
face of the that obsidian turn bright white and you hear the orb congratulations you have found the first item and there's a uh, it starts like pulsing in your hand and there is a bright flash and the uh, the obsidian chunk vanishes. Oh no! And Oops. you hear the you hear the uh, the elf say, "No, you have no idea what you've done." Oh no! <laughs> Of course, of course we just went and unleashed some kind of big evil right off the bat. No, you didn't. Okay, well... But hey! We com actually completed the first part of a quest! You did! Kapla! Kapla! Good job, everybody. You did, you did great. That went awesome. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, yeah, we actually got to a kind of good stopping point, episode one. <laughs> yeah. And you you achieved the um, the goal. I mean, you found the item. You defeated the like street gang that tried to take it from you. Yeah. <laughs> how much? Uh, how how many uh, hit points does uh, Kakano have anyway? Oh, sixty. <laughs> oh. Okay. Jesus. So yeah, yeah, he doesn't have a all. really high armor class, but he's got a lot of hit points. And when raging, has resistance to all bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's why I was like, "Oh, you're barely getting touched." Kind of made it funnier, I thought. Yeah, yeah. like every time they kind of hit him, it's like, "Ow, I was bitten by an ant, a uh, rat," equivalent <laughs> of for a regular human. Yeah, got it. I was I was wincing every time because, you know, me being a tiefling sorcerer, I have 26 hit points. And so just a couple of those hits would have put me under. Yeah, he he gets a lot. <laughs> he's a he's basically the tank. Uh, also, oh, that's going good. to get we... beaten a lot. <laughs> uh, we definitely need a tank for this party. Just got to keep him well fed. Because I'm actually like human artificer, pretty buffed as hell. Um, but I just was not rolling at all. <laughs> That's all right. I really appreciated the uh, shooting the guy in the face. Yeah, <laughs> I was just trying to look. I was like, how long does this take to do? And it was like one action to make the cannon. It's a bonus action to activate it. So I'm like, well, there you go. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> nice. Oh, what do you guys think of the premise so far? I like it. Fun. I, I, I like the fact that we are not connected with any other previous stories. This has been an Azentuary LLC production. Find us online at A-Z-E-N-T-U-A-R-Y dot com for character bios, merchandise, Patreon, and more. Thank you for listening.